You know, if you've been following the channel very long, you know I've been looking for this gun for a long time, this Rossi 92. Well, now I've got it, and I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And disappointed as I am, I still like this Rossi R92, but there's some things I do want to talk about. You'll notice I got a whole bunch of ammo here on the table, and I have shot it all through both this Rossi 92, 24-inch octagonal barrel. I'll give you a close look here in just a minute. And my Winchester 1892, my Morocco Winchester 1892 with a 20-inch barrel. And so I wanted to compare velocity data between the longer barrel and the shorter barrel. And it's that we're going to talk about. And buried in there is also some 44 Special. But right now, I want to uh, load up and put some rounds down range. And I've got some hand loads here with some with Bear's bullets. They're copper plated bullets. I've got five of them here. Let's get them loaded up and put some rounds down range. I like these Bear's bullets. They are they are very inexpensive. And unlike regular cast bullets, these are because they have a copper plate. They uh, are less likely to lead your bore. So let's see, what do we want to shoot? How about some steel? <laughs> All right, let's do that again. And there's a couple of reasons that I I'm a little disappointed in the gun number, the uh, first one, which I didn't mention earlier, is that this was a new gun, and, uh, and it has a couple of flaws in it, and I couldn't get the gentleman who was selling it, a local gun store in the Houston area, I couldn't get him to make any kind of adjustment on the gun. It was, other than that, it was at a fair price, but it has a little nick right here in the stock, right there, and it has... A rub mark in the bluing. You can't see it unless you look real close. Um, but uh, in fact, let's just take a moment right now. I'll give you a quick flyover and I'll point those out. But I've been wanting to get the 24 inch octagonal barrel because it just looks fantastic. And um, my son has the octagonal barrel in the Morocco Winchester 45 Colt, but it's got a 20 inch barrel. It's a great gun but I wanted to see if the uh, extra four inches was gonna give me substantially more velocity. And so that's what we've done the testing with. So there you have it, the Rossi R92. 24 inch octagonal barrel. The fit and finish, the shine, polish, fit and finish is not quite up to the standards of the Morocco Winchester, but you could tell it's not half baked either. And uh, let me know what you think about putting a Tang uh, aperture sight on there. I've been looking at one from Marble Arms. They're kind of pricey, but I can see me shooting this at long range. What do you think? And speaking of long range, let's see if we can hit that farthest target down there. Oh yeah. Great gun. Now, what about these 44 Specials? There they are. 44 Specials. HSM Cowboy Action Loads. Let's put a few of them in there and see if they will cycle and shoot.
One down. Let's see what happens. Two down. Three down. I'd say that was a home run. My goodness, you know, we've had two, uh, had my 357, 38, 357 wouldn't handle 38 specials real well unless I've made a really long 38 cartridge. Um, these are just standard 44 special loads with a um, 200 ring cast bullet, so nothing special. All right, I really have no idea how many 44 specials I have, but we're gonna try to hit some of those, some of those reactive targets, and by the way, I've got a can of hominy, a uh, big can of hominy sitting right there in the middle of the range. Underneath that can um, are, are some nuts and bolts and screws. And we're going to bust that can here in a minute with a high velocity round. We'll talk more about that here in just a minute. But we'll bust that can and see if we can't form that lower lid down into those nuts and bolts and come up with an interesting, um, an interesting, Halloween image. But uh, if you haven't checked out my shorts, then uh, please do. I, I'm going to post a, a weekly video, a weekly short called Lever Gun Impressions, and I'm going to shoot a lever gun round into a can of tomatoes or a can of hominy or something like that. There's going to be some stuff underneath there. Um, this is a little bit inspired by Lever Guns 50 because he has done similar things on purpose. This, uh, I, I kind of ran into this by accident because my tomato cans were forming into the into the grain pattern of the top of the stumps. And so I just uh, kind of took that to another level and I'm putting stuff under there and posting it on Wednesday. Lever guns, lever gun impressions. I'm having a hard time. There we go. Can of tomato sauce. <laughs> and we'll put one in that watermelon. <laughs> okay, I did chronograph a lot of loads, but I did not chronograph the the uh, 44 specials. Maybe I should have. But I chronographed the 180 grain Remington jacketed soft point, the 240 grain Winchester jacketed soft point, Grizzly 300 grain bear loads. Buffalo bore 265 grain dangerous game. It's got a 265 grain uh, Lehigh Defense wide flat nose copper bullet. And some barns, a 225 grain XPB hollow point ammo. Along with my Barry's hand loads. And so the disappointment was I kind of expected a universal increase in velocity with the 24-inch barrel in this Rossi over the 20-inch barrel in my Winchester 1892, and that's not what I got. And so what I want to do real quick here is go through um, through some of this ammo. I'm just going to do it real quick. I'll pop up a, a, a graphic here that you can follow along with me. But when I shot the Winchester 240 grain jacketed hollow point through this gun and this gun, they came up with the same average velocity of 1867 feet per second. No increase in velocity whatsoever there. Okay, then when I shot the Remington 180 grain jacketed hollow point, which I really like that ammo because it's screaming fast out of the uh, lever guns and I was expecting a boost out of this, but I only got plus six feet per second out of the 24 inch barrel versus the 20. And that average velocity was 2,275 feet per second for this one, 2,269 for this one. Then we had the, uh, my reloads, 240 grain XTPs, almost full charge of W296, 
This guy here had an advantage, velocity advantage of plus five, only five feet per second. So really within the margin of error on any, any test that I can do. So we'll call these equivalent. All these so far are equivalent. Then we get to the uh, Barry's plated bullets, the hand loads I made. 240 grain lead bullet with copper jacket. 1,593 feet per second average here, 1613 here. This guy had a 20, 20 feet per second advantage. So the short barrel was faster with my hand loads than the long barrel. And then we get to the 300 grain biz, grizzly bear loads. This guy here had a plus 31 foot per second average at 1604 versus uh, 1573 on the Winchester. So got a little bit of advantage there. And then we get to the Barnes XPBs. Okay, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. And uh, there was a 123 foot per second advantage here at 1581. And then the Buffalo Boar 265 grain, great little bullet. The Rossi had a 170 foot per second average increase over the 20 inch barrel, 24 versus 20 plus 170 feet per second. So that's what I was expecting kind of across the board with four additional inches of, um, of a barrel length. But then we get to the Lehigh Defense. These are my hand loads. You've seen these on the channel before. These 125 grain Lehigh Defense Extreme Defense bullets. And they are boot scooting out of a lever gun. And uh, we got a, a, an advantage, a significant advantage here with a longer barrel, an advantage of 173 feet per second. So hold on to your hats, folks. This little bullet right here, 125 grain, solid copper bullet, fluid transfer, monolithic design from Lehigh Defense, came out of this gun at 2,516 feet per second on average. Wow. And this is what we're gonna shoot the can of hominy with, 2,500 foot per second round, and see if we can make hominy rain down like hominy. Uh I hit the very top of the lid. Let me try another shot, see if there's enough moisture left in there to uh, upset that can. <sighs> Wasn't what I hoped for, but let's check it out. Yeah, I lost too much. Um, I lost too much water, so it just wasn't gonna work, but we'll try that again one day with that 125 grain. Lehigh Defense Bullet. I think it's got enough velocity and mass to upset that large can of hominy and make the hominy rain down. Thanks for watching and, and let me know in the comments why you think the, that I was getting uh, that strange, those strange velocity readings where some loads were basically equal between the two barrel lengths and some showed what we assume to be normal, a uh, 100 plus foot per second increase with four inches of increased barrel length. Let me know what you think in the comments. And with that said, thanks a lot. Subscribe if you haven't. So I'll see you in the next video.